Coming up on Ag Week TV, tis the season for seed delivery time. We'll take you to one company that is owned and operated strictly by women. In a tough ag economy, growers might want to save money on seed, but one expert says that could cost you money by harvest time. And researchers find some surprising health benefits in flax, and that could mean more opportunities for growers. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Shauna Olson. It's planting season and growers and seed suppliers are busy. But in these tough economic times, farmers might be tempted to cut seed costs, either by buying low quality seed or using bin run seed from their own farm. But the North Dakota Seed Commissioner says that's generally not a good idea. Ken Birch says you only get one chance with seed and if the seed is inferior, the crop will be too. In addition, Birch says it may not save you money. My recommendation very, very simply would be make sure and consider all the real costs of going to the bin and using that seed. There are storage costs, there are shrink costs, there are conditioning costs that come in with reusing that seed. It's something you have to be very careful about really determining the, the full and true cost of reusing versus purchasing. Birch says if you are using bin run seed, have it tested at an accredited lab for health, germination, and purity. He says farmers may also try to cut costs with cheap seed, but he says there's really no substitute for high quality certified seed. You've got one chance with seed, and you have to do it right the first time. If it's cheap, there may be a reason for that. One of the reasons might be is that it's not legal, and that's another thing to pay pretty close attention to because any seed that's offered for sale in the state of North Dakota and really any other state as well has to have a label. If it's not, a grower should question that. Birch says if you suspect someone is selling seed illegally, you should contact the state seed department. As we mentioned, seed companies are super busy getting seed out the door. Now we take you to Lidgerwood, North Dakota, and a company that brings a whole new meaning to the term girl power. It's a seed company that's owned and operated by women. This is Deb Seed Sales, located just on the north side of Lidgerwood. And this is Deb. We sell the Kelvin Asgro um, and, and a little bit of Stein beans. And then we do seed treatments. Deb Anderson owns and manages the seed company. Her daughters, Sadie and Kelly, work alongside her. People drive up, they'll come to the office, they look at us three, and they say, uh, can, can I talk to the owner or the manager? And the girls all laugh. <laughs> you got it, you know, this is, it, this is who runs the place, all three of us. So <laughs> that's kind of, it's a fun, that's a fun day for us to be able to sit and say that. Deb's been in the seed business for decades. So this is my 20th year. Pretty proud of that. She says her daughters have been part of the business most of their lives. As they were little girls, they were helping me all the time, and then they became adults and moved away. So it was really nice to bring them back, and it's a wonderful thing for me. But that wasn't always part of the plan. I remember when Kelly graduated from high school, she, she was like, I really want to go into something that's unrelated to ag. And so she went off to college with those thoughts. It took one semester and then she changed her mind on that. Kelly went into agronomy and now has her master's and Sadie is an accountant. All talents that fit in well at Deb Seed Sales. Sadie's the nuts and bolts, she puts everything together. She makes sure that we have corn in the warehouse and in the right size. Mom makes sure that everything is sold. Sadie makes sure that we have it and I try and get it out the door. All three are a jack of all trades and can do almost anything to keep the business up and running. When you're the owner and manager, you need to be an expert in everything, but I've learned through the years that I have 
my electrician on speed dial, and I have mechanics that I know I can trust. They put in big days and bigger weeks. We put in a lot of really long days and a lot of weekends too. We work full, full time through the weekend all spring long. And a lot of time together. Everybody says, how can three women work together in one office? But you have to remember, it's mom and the daughter, so if they don't like what they're doing, they just tell them. <laughs> it's different. You know, I look at it as a positive aspect, just because you kind of always know what the other person is thinking, and um, you can literally just tell them what you're thinking, and it, it doesn't create a huge rift, because at the end of the day, it's your mom and your sister. And we have a good understanding of the overall business picture and where we want to go with that. Deb grew up working on a farm and says this is in her blood. It's been a good business. I've been able to support myself, put my kids through college and then help my other adult children with some things as they get new houses or some of those things. So it's been a great business that way for me too. Deb also has two other children. Her son farms and her youngest daughter is planning to be a vet. As researchers uncover the growing health benefits of flax, more food companies are including the ingredient in their products. And that means more opportunities for farmers. Researchers released some of the latest information at the Flax Institute of the United States in Chicago. Reporter Tracy Frank was there. Tracy, what did you find out? Shauna Flax is showing some pretty incredible health benefits. A clinical trial in Canada has shown that hypertensive patients who ate three tablespoons of flaxseed every day for a year had very large decreases in blood pressure. Researchers also found a 10 to 15 percent decrease in cholesterol levels, which they say would impact heart disease and stroke by about 20 percent. The patients were all on antihypertensive drugs, but still had high blood pressure. Researchers are now working on a trial studying whether flaxseed can replace medication. So there are large effects on cardiovascular disease that weren't entirely expected. Our results are extremely strong uh, for the medical field, but they offer a tremendous opportunity to the food processing industry to get it into a variety of different foods. Consumer interest in flax is growing because it contains omega-3 fatty acids, plant-based protein, and fiber. While the demand for flaxseed is increasing, agronomists say because it's a relatively small crop, it can't expand too quickly. Uh, when you have a relatively small crop and you get many more acres, then you get more production and then the price will go down too quickly. And the people that have been growing flax for a long time, they are getting good at it. And so that is, that is kind of still a niche in North Dakota. Candle says it can also be difficult to switch from soybeans and corn to flax because of the high learning curve. Up next on Ag Week TV, graduation season is just around the corner. A struggling ag economy, you might be surprised at the outlook for ag grads. How did we become the region's largest independent seed company? By taking a very simple but powerful stand. We will sell no seed that we wouldn't be happy to plant on our own farm. Peterson Farm Seed. Stand tall. Total Ag Industries is the leader in total control. Total Ag offers the latest and greatest in seeds from Legend and Wensman, featuring the newest in cutting edge seed technologies and access to every genetic and seed trait platform. Total Ag can help you choose the seed that's right for your specific field, leading the way to better yields and more profit. Contact Total Ag Industries by phone or visit totalag.com. Department line one, please. The right tool for the job could be a pair of Ariad boots. Pull on safety toe protection with an available waterproof barrier for all day comfort. Ariad is a customer favorite because they add design to their gear, never sacrificing function or safety. And we always have the guaranteed lowest price. Ariad flame resistant work shirts, jackets, and jeans are some of the most durable you'll find. They work on the job site at Uptown Saturday night. Home of economy, where your dollar buys more. 
do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. North Dakota soybean farmers put food on tables all over the world, including their own. That's why it's important that we produce healthy, safe, affordable food. It's also important that we keep up with demand. Today's farmer feeds 155 people per year. Compare that to a farmer only two generations ago who produced enough for just 26. Most North Dakota farms are still family owned and operated because our care of the land that feeds the world today is our children's legacy for tomorrow. Soon, thousands of college graduates will be turned out into the world, and the outlook is bright for ag students despite low crop prices and farm profits. As Jonathan Knudsen found, there are many reasons for that, including the wave of baby boomers nearing retirement. Young blood, a fresh crop, a generational turn. Whatever you call them, they're the future of agriculture. Today, I visit with a class of college ag students. We're all very smart, we're all very passionate about agriculture, and I think it's also our job to kind of pass on that passion for agriculture. People need to start having too, especially our generation, that's a work ethic. You've got to have that. All the evidence is and all the numbers are that these are really great times to be a college ag student. Talk a little bit about that, just the, the opportunities that you see out there. There's a lot of open jobs in ag education, so that's obviously a good opportunity. Something else I see as an opportunity is getting to teach other people about things that I'm really passionate about. Well, I think the biggest opportunities are going to come just with our own advancements. You know, I come from a family farm. We have like 3,500 acres of wheat and soybeans, and we have an opportunity just to move forward and get better yields and test out things as new technology is coming around. For me, it's being able to get back to my hometown and provide veterinary services to a lot of the small town farmers. Uh, I remember growing up, it was really hard to find a vet. They had to drive an hour to get to our place. and It really put a huge burden on our family financially. Um, so being able to go back and provide affordable veterinary care for large animals, um, that's going to be a huge opportunity for me. They believe in science, education, and ag. And they stress they're committed. For Ag Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. A recent USDA study shows good employment opportunities for ag students with expertise in food, natural resources, or the environment. And it says there will be enough graduates to fill 60% of those jobs. Marilyn Lewis is an ag student. She graduates in May with a degree in animal science from the University of Minnesota Crookston. Lewis was raised on a farm near Bemidji, Minnesota. She hopes to return there someday, but first she'd like to try her hand at being a herd manager or a related job. Lewis says she's nervous yet excited to see where life takes her. But one thing she understands is the cyclical nature of the business. It's kind of one of those things where it's kind of like a cycle where some years it's going to be good prices, some years it's going to be bad, everything goes up and down. Um, you just kind of have to learn how to like manage time, money, because obviously if you're not getting the best prices, you shouldn't be spending a lot. You should kind of be paying off things or saving it up for future years. Lewis already has her own small herd of beef cattle on her father's farm. Hundreds of students took part in the annual South Dakota FFA convention this week. It's held on the SDSU campus in Brookings and gives high school students from 75 chapters across the state the chance to show off their skills in ag-related competitions and explore ag careers. FFA definitely impacts uh, students' career focus and what they want to do with their life. After I got involved and realized that it wasn't just cows, plows, and sows, I realized there was so much more to FFA and agriculture and I think a lot of students recognize that when they join FFA because agriculture right now is really technological based with drones and GPS and genetic engineering. Letty says FFA has had a big impact on her life. She's competed at the national level five times. 
Is spring finally here to stay? Your planting outlook is up next. And later, Jonathan Knutson takes on the controversial subject of federal crop insurance. What I believe sets us apart is the way our products are crafted. Every frame has to have a precision to it that you don't see in other brands. It's what makes it a true Minn Kota window. It's time to demand more. With Micro Essentials, you get more from every acre. Through our fusion technology, only Micro Essentials combines four vital nutrients into one powerful granule ensuring uniform nutrient distribution and increased nutrient uptake. The innovation behind our fusion technology means you'll grow stronger, healthier plants. Microessentials. Get more from every acre. Skag, the toughest name in lawnmowers. Unmatched quality and performance for over three decades. The clear choice. The best mower money can buy for work or at home. Top lawn care professionals and discerning homeowners know that Skag means productivity and reliability. Every Skag mower is proudly built right here in the USA. Don't settle for anything less than simply the best. Skag. Contact your nearest dealer or call North Country Marketing. Northland Outdoors is about so much more than the biggest fish or the hottest hunting spots. All across the Northland, there are amazing people with incredible stories to tell. We're going to find those stories and share them with everyone. Join us each and every week as we explore the Northland and experience some of the most exciting outdoor adventures in the country right here in our own backyard. This is Northland Outdoors. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. It's hard not to take pride in what I do. I think everyone here sees the value in what they're creating. We work hard to make every window a true Minkota window. Weather portion of Ag Week now. I'm checking once again within the uh, surface water monitor. It's an experimental uh, monitor. comes out of the University of Washington. You can find it on the internet. But this week's uh, surface water monitor continues to indicate most of North Dakota soils are quite dry. When you get into the uh, browns and the red shades, that's where you're talking about, oh, within about the 10th percentile for moisture for this time of year. So it, it, it's getting to be really dry east central southeast North Dakota. The white doesn't necessarily mean things are good because it's a little bit dry everywhere except up in the far northwest corner. Now it's really hard to actually to measure surface water. It's just it's just not an easy thing to get at with any of the tools that we have. And so uh, this is an experimental model, but it does indicate a lot of green, a lot of wet soils. Down around Sioux Falls, northwest Iowa, where that snow pack went uh, all winter long, they kept getting snows. If you're interested in the Corn Belt, most of it a little dry again, especially the eastern edge, Ohio in particular, quite dry. Get back into Iowa, it's quite wet, and then up in our direction, the Dakotas, north of Sioux Falls, it's fairly dry once again. So the question is, are we going to change that? I doubt it. Now we did get some rain around this weekend. Certainly we're getting some showers. The jet stream pattern, here's that little low that's helping to provide the rain this weekend. But the main branch of the polar jet's gone pretty far north right now, and that allows for a lot of mild air to accumulate. So the jet stream this week will favor northern plains getting a lot of warm, dry weather. And once the weather's, I think it's going to be quite dry across this area all week long, basically. And as we head toward the end of the week, looks like a little dip in the jet suggests maybe a weekend rain system next weekend, but I'm not convinced. I think this thing may kind of slip around us and uh, I just don't see it getting a lot of rain into the northern plains in the near future. Let's take a look at the forecasts this week. 
Well, I think the next weather system will approach, bring some rain into California, and instead of just moving up into our region, it'll likely produce another round of storms in the south, rain and eventually turning into snow, but kind of leveling off and stalling out before it really gets into much of the northern plains. Likely to get some moisture around Sioux Falls, but north of there it will get less and less. Pacific Coast rains, that's actually continuing to be good news down there. Uh, the southern plains will get some rain. The northeast mostly dry except far north New England. The dry weather in the Corn Belt and the northern plains except for maybe the area around Sioux Falls. Second week of the forecast, a little more iffy because of the time of year. It does look like some more rain for the southwest, not necessarily super heavy, but any rain in the desert is big rain. The east coast looks dry and most of the middle part of the country for the last week of April. It looks like another very warm week rainfall looking fairly uncertain. And my basic gut feeling is that most of the northern plains probably will be dry for the most part the rest of the month. Commitment. You need it to succeed on the farm. It's total dedication to the land, family and community. It's more than a way to make a living, it's a way of life. You've had it since the first time you ran your hands through the soil, held bale hay, or rode along in the combine. Your commitment, it's as strong as your family's trust, as honest as each long day you put in, and as pure as the opportunity that comes with every tomorrow. It's how we build our bins, with proven design, superior structural integrity, a lifetime warranty, and a promise to stand with you, no matter what storms come your way. The harvest will always be protected, so you can sell when it's right for you, your family, and your farm. Commitment. It's why we can say, there's nothing standard about Superior. In today's marketplace, maximizing your harvest is more valuable than ever. Improve the efficiency of your operation by adding a Crary Air Reel to your harvester today. A continuous stream of high-velocity air quickly feeds crop back to the auger, getting your crop off the cutter bar and into the header. This minimizes shattering and reduces the amount of header loss. At harvest time, every second counts and every bean counts, so you can count on Crary. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. We believe in a fair and balanced approach to state and federal regulation. Proposed changes to OSHA's anhydrous ammonia policy, EPA's Waters of the U.S., the Clean Air Act, and endangered species are a few examples of what we are facing. The one-size approach doesn't work for North Dakota. Agriculture Commissioner Doug Goring wants to work with you to protect our state. Go to our website to see the latest issues that affect not only agriculture today, but for future generations. Ag Week TV, sponsored by Peterson Farm Seed. The federal crop insurance program is an important tool for farmers, but a new study claims it drives up land prices, helping big farms outbid small ones for land. Ag Week's Jonathan Knudsen shares his thoughts in this week's commentary. Federal crop insurance is designed to protect farmers from what's called unavoidable risk. Taxpayers pick up part of the cost producers the rest. Most Midwest farmers really like the program. They describe it as a common sense cornerstone of the U.S. Farm Bill. They say it helps to keep our food supply safe and affordable. Critics, on the other hand, say the program is the sacred cow of U.S. ag. They complain that it unfairly subsidizes big producers at the expense of small ones. I wrote recently about one study that's critical of the program. Common sense cornerstone or sacred cow? You'll need to decide that for yourself. But this much I do know. The critics aren't going to ease up. If you support federal crop insurance, you can't let up either. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. The study was done by the Center for Rural Affairs. 
When we come back on Ag Week TV, youngsters get a hands-on farm experience at Kitty Days. How did we become the region's largest independent seed company? By taking a very simple but powerful stand. We will sell no seed that we wouldn't be happy to plant on our own farm. Peterson Farm Seed. Stand tall. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Northland Outdoors is about so much more than the biggest fish or the hottest hunting spots. All across the Northland, there are amazing people with incredible stories to tell. We're gonna find those stories and share them with everyone. Join us each and every week as we explore the Northland and experience some of the most exciting outdoor adventures in the country right here in our own backyard. This is Northland Outdoors. Progressive Ag Law has partnered with many farmers on Ag Legal Matters, and now they're ready to fight for you. According to the National Grain and Feed Association, when Syngenta varieties were rejected by China in 2013, farmers lost 11 to 50 cents a bushel due to the price drop. Since all U.S. corn farmers were hurt, every corn farmer has a potential claim for financial damages against Syngenta. You shouldn't have to pay for Syngenta's mistake. Every progressive ag lawyer has a strong background in agricultural law and is ready to stand with you against Syngenta, who pursued their profits at your expense. All costs are paid for by the legal team on a contingency basis. They don't get paid unless you get paid. Visit them online at progressiveaglaw.com or call 1-800-450-1404. Progressive Ag Law. Ag Law is our focus. Hundreds of little ones got a hands-on lesson in farming this week. NDSU's Saddle and Sirloin Club held its annual Kitty Days. College students helped kids see and touch real live farm animals. The students taught them about the animals and answered their questions. Lately, we've really moved away from agriculture. Not many people know a lot about agriculture, and I think education is the main thing that we need to work on. About 1,700 kids from area daycares, preschools, and kindergartens had the chance to take part in Kitty Days. This week's photo of the week comes from Travis Bennett from Walhalla, North Dakota. He says Franklin was the only bull calf born in their small herd of highlands this year. He says he has quite the personality and has a hole in the fence that he often sneaks out of. Here he is hanging out with the chickens. Too fun. If you want to see your ag photos on Ag Week TV, email your photo and a description of what's happening in the picture to photos at agweek.com. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. We'll see you next week.